Before we get into the history, just take a second to subscribe to Iron Age Instincts and, you know, share this channel with someone who values real, practical history. What we're covering today isn't trivia. It's actually one of those quiet wartime solutions that solved a life-or-death problem without machines, wires, or any sort of modern convenience. During the Second World War, millions of civilians had to figure out how to keep food edible for months in brutal winters, all while dealing with rationing, blackouts, and constant supply disruptions. Out of that pressure came a design so effective that it's still being quietly used today by off-grid homesteaders and survivalists, often without even realising its wartime origins. The problem World War II civilians faced when fresh food simply disappeared. By the early 1940s, refrigeration was not common in Europe, electricity was unreliable, and fuel was tightly rationed. Fresh vegetables vanished quickly once winter set in. Supply lines were bombed, farms lost labour to conscription, and imports collapsed. Spoilage wasn't just an inconvenience, it was hunger. Governments push civilians to grow their own food, but growing food is only half the battle. Preserving it without power became the real challenge. Canning required fuel and jars. Drying stripped nutrients. Fermentation didn't suit everything. What people needed was a way to slow time itself, to hold vegetables in a suspended state until spring. You know, the answer wasn't invented from scratch. Root cellars had existed for centuries, but what really changed during the Second World War was just how deliberately they were engineered. Governments actually published civil defence manuals, laying out precise cellar designs that controlled temperature, humidity, airflow and, well, even darkness. The aim was to recreate those underground winter conditions all year round. These cellars were dug deep enough to stay just above freezing, usually between 1 and 4 degrees Celsius. Thick earth walls served as insulation, and ventilation pipes were carefully positioned so cold air would enter low and warmer air could escape high creating a kind of natural convection, all without the need for fans or electricity. So, why did soil, depth and airflow matter more than the structure itself? Well, what made these cellars work wasn't the brick or concrete, but an understanding of physics. Soil, you see, holds a stable temperature below the frost line. During bombing raids, civilians noticed that underground shelters stayed cool in summer and surprisingly mild in winter. Engineers took that same logic and applied it to food storage. Moisture in the soil maintained high humidity, which prevented root vegetables from shriveling up. Darkness, meanwhile, suppressed sprouting. Proper airflow was key, too. It prevented mould without drying the produce out. When built correctly, potatoes could last eight months. Carrots remained crisp until April. And cabbages stayed edible long after ration books ran thin. Now, let's talk about how ordinary families managed to apply this design with, honestly, pretty limited materials. Not everyone could pour concrete or dig massive chambers, right? Wartime manuals took that into account. Families converted basements, dug hillside chambers, or even buried wooden crates, reinforced with a bit of scrap metal and tar paper. A common method involved digging a pit, lining it with straw and planks, then covering it with soil thick enough to insulate against frost. Vent pipes were often made from salvaged stove flue, or sometimes just hollowed logs. 
Vegetables were stored in sand, sawdust or peat moss to keep them separated and slow down rot. These systems weren't perfect by any means, but, well, they worked well enough to keep families fed. So, what vegetables really thrived in this system? And, you know, why did that matter nutritionally? Well, this design favoured hardy crops. Potatoes, turnips, beets, parsnips, onions, squash and apples all performed exceptionally well. These foods provided calories, vitamin C and minerals, especially when meat and fats were, uh, in short supply. Wartime nutrition studies showed that families using cellar storage suffered fewer deficiencies than those relying on preserved tins alone. And honestly, the fresh texture and flavour mattered psychologically too. Eating crisp vegetables in February wasn't just nourishment, it was, in fact, a real boost to morale. You don't need a farm or a bunker to use this knowledge. A modern application can be as simple as, well, converting a corner of a basement. Choose the coolest wall, ideally below ground level. Add ventilation using two pipes or ducts, one low and one high. And remember, insulate the ceiling, not the walls, so the earth temperature does the work for you. So, you want to store your vegetables the right way? Well, keep them unwashed and dry, that's really important. Make sure to separate them by type and, ah, never mix onions with potatoes. If you don't have a basement, don't worry. A buried storage box in shaded soil can, surprisingly, replicate the same effect quite well. The principle here is stability not technology. Why did this design survive the war and, you know, quietly outlast all those modern systems? Well, after the Second World War, refrigeration spread quickly and, honestly, root cellars fell out of favour. But here's the thing. The design never actually stopped working. And today, it's resurfacing among folks who distrust fragile supply chains, and yeah, all that energy dependence. Unlike modern systems, this design simply can't break down during blackouts, cyber attacks or fuel shortages. It doesn't rely on spare parts or, you know, technicians. It just relies on dirt, gravity and air. That's exactly why it's, well, timeless. So, what does this wartime solution really teach us about resilience? This design wasn't about nostalgia at all. It was about adaptation under pressure. Civilians during the Second World War didn't romanticise hardship. They engineered their way around it. They understood that survival wasn't just about weapons or factories, but about all those everyday systems that quietly keep people alive. The root cellar wasn't heroic, but honestly, it was essential. If you value this kind of grounded, practical history, go ahead and subscribe to Iron Age Instincts. Share this video with someone who cares about resilience and help keep these lessons alive. History like this isn't meant to sit on a shelf. It's meant to be used.